Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 500 people to click on the link in the description below will get two months of Skillshare Premium free. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Daniel Schiffer, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I adjust my camera settings to get proper exposure in my videos. Now, there are already a ton of videos on the internet about cameras' basic exposure settings and what they all do, but I haven't seen too many tutorials that lay out step-by-step -step how to use these settings to get proper exposure. So the very first thing you'll need to do is make sure that your camera's video settings are in full manual. We don't want shutter priority or aperture priority or any of those half manual, half automatic modes. But once you've done that, the first setting you're going to lock in is your shutter speed. When shooting video, your shutter speed should always be one over double your frame rate in order to maintain the most natural or cinematic looking motion blur. So let's say your frame rate is 24 frames per second. Then in this case, your shutter should be one over 50. And if your frame rate is 120 frames per per second, your shutter should be one over 250. If your shutter is too low, you'll get this choppy and slow looking footage. And if your shutter is too high, your footage will look unnatural and kind of fast. Now there are of course going to be times where you can break this rule and play around with your shutter speed, but generally speaking, you'll want to follow this for most of your work. Okay, so now that we've set our shutter speed, we're not going to touch it unless we decide to change frame rates. And the next setting we're going to be locking in is our aperture or f-stop. Most of the time, what f-stop you choose will be up to your personal preference. However, there are scenarios where you may not have as much flexibility. For example, if you're shooting in a very poorly lit scenario, such as nighttime, you're most likely going to end up opening your aperture as wide as it can go to its lowest f-stop. And in this case, it will let in more light, which is typically better for these low light situations. Now, on the other hand, if you are in a scenario where the lighting is actually decent and you have good control over your lighting situation, you can pretty much choose your aperture based on the look that you're going for. Now I use the Sony a7 III, which is a full frame camera, and this tends to give more of a dramatic depth of field or blurry background effect compared to a crop sensor camera. So in most cases, when I'm filming people, I find that anywhere between f2.8 or f4 seems to be the sweet spot for a nice dramatic look with a natural looking depth of field. Now, if you are filming a subject wide open at f1.4, there's a good chance that you'll get that weird look where the subject's eye is in focus, but their nose may still be out of focus just because of how shallow that depth of field is. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are adjusting your aperture. Now, when I'm shooting landscapes or buildings, I find that things tend to look the best when using an aperture or f-stop of f7.1. But keep in mind these numbers that I'm throwing around here are my personal preference. So I do recommend that you do some research on your own about your lenses and what sort of f-stop looks the sharpest. But once you have set your aperture to an f-stop that you're happy with, the last thing you'll need to do is adjust your ISO. ISO controls the sensitivity of your camera's sensor and the higher that ISO number, the brighter your image will be. Now the catch is that as you increase this ISO to those higher numbers, the more noise you'll be introducing into your shot. This is why I always set my ISO last because generally you wanna keep that number as low as possible. So if you are shooting in really bright scenarios, that ISO might be anywhere between 100 and 400 depending on your other settings. And in those darker scenes, you'll likely be using something around 800 to 3200, again, depending on what other settings you're using. Now, if you do want more tips about shooting videos in low light, I did a video all about that, which you can check out up here. So one scenario that we often run into when adjusting our camera settings is when you're shooting in very bright daylight and even at the lowest ISO, everything is overexposed and blown out. In these scenarios, you really have three options. Option number one is to maintain your depth of field by cranking your shutter speed really high, which will remove your motion blur, leading to that sort of unnatural jittery look that I was talking about before. Now, option number two is to maintain that shutter speed and instead crank your f-stop to something really high, but this will result in losing that nice cinematic shallow depth of field. The third option is the one I recommend, and that is to get yourself an ND filter. Filter. There's a whole bunch of different ND filters out there. My favorite being these ND polarizers from Polar Pro, which I actually did a review on. But let's say you don't have the budget for something that expensive and you just need something that will let you maintain your camera settings in almost any scenario. In this case, you could pick up something like a variable ND filter, which will adjust your exposure simply by twisting it. Variable NDs are fairly inexpensive and get the job done. So if you haven't already invested in one of these, now is the time because it is super important. Now remember, 
remember that when you're getting an ND filter, make sure you get it in a size that fits your biggest lens and then buy some adapter rings so that you can use it on your smaller lenses as well. So I get asked constantly where I learned to make videos and if I went to film school, but the truth is that pretty much everything I know about creating videos and making social media content is picked up over the years through watching tons of online content. I actually just finished watching this incredibly helpful course by Sally Sargood on Skillshare, where she talks about how to create videos for your own business. This course is awesome for those of you who don't aspire to be working necessarily on big productions, but you just want to up your video skills so that you can make content for small brands and companies. Now, if you're not already familiar with Skillshare, it's essentially an online learning community for creators with thousands of business, lifestyle, technology classes, and with their premium membership, you get unlimited access to high quality classes from experts who cover topics such as shooting vlogs, wedding films, documentaries, and low budget filmmaking, all for less than $10 a month. And the first 500 people to click on the link down in the description below will get two months of Skillshare Premium completely free. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.